Well, welcome everybody to Ashland, Nebraska and the Birdcage as tonight the Ashland Greenwood Blue Jays ranked number one in the state. They are trying to extend their season against an upstart Conestoga Cougars team that saw their best shooter last night go off for 25 and he hopes to have yet another night where he can put some pressure on a Blue Jay squad that has been known to be very tough defensively. They know they've got a tall task tonight to slow down Noah Simonese and this very hungry Conestoga Cougars team. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Washburn and I'm joined by the best broadcasting team in America on the technicals tonight. The super software we call him, the track star here at Ashland Greenwood is none other than Elliot Gossin. And to my very far right tonight, the man that won All-American honors at Hastings College as a starting tight end, won a state championship at Beatrice High School in basketball playing for Jim Weeks, Jordan Wallman. And I think joining us tonight, running a little late, uh, we've got a headset ready for him, Ashland Greenwood girls coach Dave Hubert. He spent 10 years going to state championships on the girls' side, and he's got a lot to share tonight for this matchup between Ashland Greenwood and Conestoga. Well, Jordan, Noah Simonese was absolutely phenomenal last night. 25 points. He has been scorching it with his shooting of late, averaging in his last five games over 23 points a contest. And the Blue Jays are going to put Brooks Kissinger on him. They believe Brooks and his defense has an opportunity to try to slow down Simonese. But let's talk about that matchup what the Blue Jays will try to do against uh, the very, very talented junior. You know, it really starts with on-ball defense being present when he catches. Uh, that's the biggest thing. You know, you're not, you're not helping off a lot when we have the scout as they go through practice. Brooks is working on staying on his man playing one-on-one D. Uh, you know, he, he scored a lot last night, and he scored a lot off of threats of a downhill attack, um, kind of set back into his rhythm and shoot a three. So it's a hard thing to defend, and... You know, it's a tall task for a guy to be on ball, and the Blue Jays have tried that a couple times this year, putting Brooks on, on the number one guy, Brody Travis, uh, uh, the Orr kid from Roncalli. Um, they really looked to put Brooks in that role of a shutdown defender. Well, let's flip it on the other side. The Ashland Greenwood Blue Jays have been awfully tough of late. Conestoga coming off their third win in a row. And here come the Blue Jays. They have been phenomenal against Malcolm and Bishop Newman. They really took apart Grand Island Northwest uh, about a week and a half ago, 84-32. And so for all of the challenges that Conestoga brings, this is an actual Greenwood Blue Jay squad that's got a lot of scorers. And man, do they play defense. So how does Conestoga first off attack the Blue Jays defensively? Yeah, it all starts, uh, you know, Kale, Kale Jacobson attracts a lot of attention. And so the, the really positive thing for Kale and for the Blue Jays that, is that we got about five or six guys that can and really when a defense converges down on Kale, uh, accept a pass on the outside and, uh, and hit a big shot. So <laughs> we got Coach Huber coming on up. Here he is. Get that he's, man a headset. He's going to get docked up. I know. Going to get a little bit oh, of late pay here, He's right? fine. He's in, we're in for a long night, an exciting night of basketball. <laughs> so I'm, I'm thankful to have his wealth of knowledge up here. Oh, me what too. Up, Coach? He's just not accustomed to what it's like here in the broadcast booth here. We show up at, what, 4 o'clock in yeah. the afternoon? And yeah. yeah. And uh, he's learning to these, these new hours. <laughs> I got to get used to him. I've been working on my Chris Collinsworth slide in. You know, like he That's does right. All, but, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a camera on us, so it doesn't matter. So <laughs> happy to be here early practicing coach yeah well, thank he you. did slide in tonight welcome coach thank uh, you this is going to be a fun one tonight as conestoga coming off just an absolutely terrific performance last night defensively jordan was talking about what they're going to have to try to do defensively against the blue jays and obviously this blue jay squad can play some d as well and so talk a little bit about what has impressed you with Ashland greenwood this year on that side of the court well uh, first of all the first thing i noticed is how quickly they get up up and down. Uh, they can score in bunches and they can score in a hurry. So the pace uh, is incredible. And I talked to Coach Mose about press break uh, this fall and he said, you know, we get the ball to Kale and we go. He says, we don't mess around. And so they get down the floor uh, in, a, in a hurry and of course it's hard to press them you know, because of that. 
Well, I tell you, this Conestoga squad, they've got some confidence going. Now, these two teams, they banged heads in late December. The Blue Jays won 81 to 42. But you know that Coach Aarons, with the great job that he does at Conestoga, will have this team ready to play tonight. And again, he's running into a Blue Jay squad playing some of their best basketball at the right time. Now, Conestoga, the same thing we mentioned earlier. They've won three in a row, and they have been solid. So you've got two teams Good running into each other here in the postseason that are playing at some of the top of their game. That's going to make this even more fun. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Well, folks, we are going to pause here as the gym is filling up here at the birdcage. As you hear Matt Flynn, our athletic director, he's going to let you know that we are going to pause now for the playing of the National Anthem. Thank you for your cooperation and good luck to both teams. Now, please rise and remove your hats and help us honor our flag and our country as the Conestoga Pep Band plays our national anthem. Nicely done by the Conestoga Pep Band, and that brings us to the starting lineups. And we're going to start off with the Conestoga Cougars. They come in here with a record of 11 and 12, coming off a nice victory last night against their rivals, the Louisville Lions. And in the backcourt, it is the CEO, the chairman of the board. We call him the six foot one inch junior, Jack Welch. He's averaging just over 12 points a game. He'll be joined by sharpshooting Noah Simony, the six one sophomore who went off for 25 last night and averaging 17 points a game. Ty Fox, a 6'2 senior, he's putting up about eight and a half points a game. And he'll be joined by the 6'1 senior Bryson Berg. And the fifth starter in that lineup for the Cougars is Lucas Michael, a 6'5 senior averaging three rebounds a game and just over eight points a game. And now for the Big Blue at 21-1, ranked number one in Class C1. It's Kale Jacobson, as Jordan likes to call him, too smooth. Kale Jacobson, the 6'4", senior averaging 16 and a half a game. He's got Evan Shepard to work with in that backcourt, a 6'2", senior averaging just under eight points a game. Brooks Kissinger, we've mentioned him, a talented junior at six feet, two inches tall, averaging just over 11 a game. And Cougar Conson, who's been great on the boards this year, a 6'4", junior. And he'll be joined by Max Parker on that front line, the 6'6", senior who plays like the Energizer Bunny, he will bring a lot of energy and emotion to this contest tonight. You see a full gym here tonight in the birdcage as Max Parker, the 6'6 senior, will be going up against Berg. And the officials tonight, Alex Johnson, Chase Grizzle, and Greg Moshman. And this will be Alex Johnson to put it up in the air as the crowd on their feet, and we're underway. Class C-1-2, sub-district action here in Ashland, Nebraska, as Evan Shepard will face man-to-man -man defense. Blue Jays come out with a set four cross, and Kale loses it early. Who's gonna track it down? It looks like Conestoga will. Back the other way, come the Cougars. There's Simonies, it's Shepard gonna be on Welch. Kissinger on Simonies, they double him quickly. Blue Jays with a steal, here comes Shepard. He'll go right at the chairman of the board and hits the left-handed layup. Blue Jays up early. It's a great job by Evan turning defense into offense. Goes in and uses a nice little misdirection step to finish in transition. And here comes that double team again. As they're going to go to Simonese in the corner. This time Cougar on him. They got switched up out of that press. 
Hans and Miller, tough defender. There's that double team again, but they leave a man wide open. He drills a three, and the Cougars respond. As you go to scramble and as you go to look to create pace opportunities, you can't leave shooters open, especially not against the Conestoga team that likes to shoot. Boy, do they like to shoot, coached by Jason Aarons, a sharpshooter himself. That was Lucas Michael on the three bomb. And here's a little dump off to Kale from the right side. He scores. He's fouled by Fox. And the Blue Jays retake the lead at four to three. Uh, did you notice a double team in the post yeah. there? And uh, you could tell uh, Coach Moses was ready for that because Kale uh, immediately back cut when his man double teamed. I'll tell you what, folks, when you're calling a game with a couple of coaches here, <laughs> they see the world a little differently. They pick that double team up quick, and as Coach Hubert said, they found Kale cutting to the hole. And here's a dribble off the foot of Welch. And Kale comes up with a steal, and he'll dump it off behind him there. Thought that he had Kissinger right behind him, but that was Lucas Michael who stepped in there and gets the steal. What a few turnovers here early. Here is Berg, gonna get it back over to Welch. He's just having a little trouble in handling the ball to start this game, a little bit of nerves going. Can't say I blame him. Gets a pick. There's Cougar. Now make that Brooks on Simonides. Now they're going to work in the paint. Look at Fox fly. He can't score. And the board coming down to Konza. Blue Jays running out of there. Here comes Kale Jacobson. The gym rat pulls up on the block. Goes up high off the glass. Just a little tough angle. And the rebound coming down to Welch. He'll dribble out of there. A little more physical than what we saw last night, isn't it? Yeah. They're going to be uh, pretty aggressive tonight. This is a pretty big game. Bodies flying early on. 5-3, the Blue Jays lead. Conestoga facing yet another double team and nearly dropped there on that pass to Berg, but trapping it down is Simonese. Blue Jays bonded man-to-man -man as Welch will work. Spin, left hand, beautiful shot by the CEO, Welch. It's a good little move. You know, he's a right-handed driver, right-handed shooter, so you're going to play him to his right. There he shows right drive, forces back left, and nice little six-foot left-hand finish. Here's a great intro pass to Brooks Kissinger, and he throws it away. Thrown away by Fox, so the turnovers plaguing the Blue Jays with three early turnovers for Ashton Greenwood. There's that student body for Ashton Greenwood. Channing defense as Fox will dump it off to Welch. There's that double on Welch. Blue Jays tracking as Fox will hold it. Skip pass over to Welch. He's got an open three. Can't get it to fall. There's Max on the board. Parker. Kale with a long outlet pass to Shepard off the right block, a little out of control. And credit that time, Lucas Michael with some good D. Yep, he was in a uh, great position there. Back the other way. Here's a little floater in the paint. We had a travel, gonna be called on Simonies. And we've got a quick timeout by Coach Mose. Doesn't like the way this game feels with 4.30 to go first quarter, deadlocked at five. What are you liking right now about Conestoga, Coach? Well, um, first of all, you know, they hit a three there. Um, we're going to have to keep an eye on that because threes can really change momentum. And um, I, I'm, I'm sure that they're, uh, they're going to be very aware of where those shooters are. And Jordan, what do you like about what the Blue Jays are doing here early on? Um, I think they're doing a really good job on their defense. They're not doing a great job of leaving their feet on passes. Uh, Conestoga is not converging down the way that we saw DC West. And, the Blue Jays have really torn people apart through converging down kick out threes. So they're staying on their man. They're, they're trusting their one-on-one -on -one defense, especially down low. And Blue Jays are just jumping, looking to make kick out passes, and it's resulting in unsafe plays. Well, we have got a great coaching matchup tonight as well. Jake Mose against Jason Aarons. These guys will go at it tonight like a chess match. And here's Cougar Consum at the free throw line. He's going to find a man in the corner. Brooks Kissinger tries the left baseline. Good job defensively there by Fox. Here's a three put up by Consum. Oh. Bingo! And there was some better breakdown. They saw Cougar get in. He saw Brooks get in, even though he kind of played a little flimsy there. Uh, he got the ball back, and there we got a kick out three that we were looking for. Dane Jacobson checks in the game. And the pressure. Simonese able to beat it, but nearly stolen by Cougar. Good quick hands. But Simonese strong enough to rip it back. Simonese in the paint, going to look to kick it out. He does. He finds Welch. Pretty good ball movement here by the Cougars. And here comes a double team that's going to leave Berg open. Berg will find a wide open Fox. He gives up an open three to attack the rim, and he's fouled. A little surprise there, but 
Nicely done by Fox to go at the rim. And one thing Conestoga's doing well is that as we go to trap that, that ball screen, they're coming off and they're not taking that first open lane. That's how you speed teams up. They're finding the kick out shooter. They're creating a closeout to Fox and then he's driving and playing off two feet. So um, they're playing mature. They're not taking the first bait and it's resulting in great shots rather than good shots. Evan Savanda checks in the game. He is a six foot senior. He played absolutely terrific basketball last night. Second free throws up and good, so Fox hits them both. He's shooting just 24% from beyond the arc, and that may have been reason. The Fox said, I'm going to give up that open three and attack the rim, and here comes Cougar Consum the other way. Dumps it off to Dane Jacobson. Normally in the game, we'd see Cade Bridges for the Blue Jays, but he's out with an injury. And here comes Cale Jacobson in the paint. Looks, kicks it in the corner to Parker. Parker going to attack the rim. Little hook shot that goes for Max. That's a beauty. That's a beauty for Max, really. Showed a controlled right drive. Uh, it's a big shot for the Blue Jays. We needed it. Nice to see the old hook shot coming back in vogue. As this will be Fox working off with Simonese. Three point Blue Jay lead. Just under three minutes to go, first quarter in the C 1 2 district, sub district matchup. Fox out to Welch. And he looks over to Coach Aarons for a set. Coach, what are they going to run here? They're going to do a little ball screen? No. Welch is going to attack it. And nothing doing here is this Blue Jay defense just too tough. Little flex action. And they dump it to Welch and the Blue Jay student body in a frenzy right now. Listen to that noise. And here comes Max. Does he get the steal? No. Savannah tracks it down. Bird can't okay. keep it. Stolen by Parker. Parker gives it out to Shepard. Back to Max. They'll work that right side against man-to-man. -man. Three point Blue Jay lead. Oh, that defense is deadly, isn't it? Yeah. Here comes Shepard from the right side. He'll knock it home. Evan being really aggressive. Another positive is every made shot we get a press. And here's that pressure that just will wear on you. But right now, Fox will attack himself off the glass. No good, and here comes Kale running two on two. What a nice pass, pass to Shepard! Oh my goodness, Mamma Mia! Woo, baby, Beautiful that's pass. fun stuff to watch. <laughs> One-handed lead out by the senior Jacobson. Another pass the other way. Simonies, the byproduct of a beautiful pass, and it's now 14 to nine. Can't lose him in transition. That's their that's their primary scorer, primary finisher. Here's Kale trying to take over. We got a ball tipped around. Kale tracking it down. There's Savander with the quick hand. Gotta love this action early, huh, fellas? Both teams are really getting after it. Fox will give it over to Simonese. Scored 25 last night. He had six trays in that game. We're gonna talk about some of his numbers that are just amazing. We're gonna a minute to go here in the quarter. Fox in the paint, one had a pass. To Welch, he's knocked down, no whistle, and Dane Jacobson, the sophomore with the board. He's running, eyes up, finds Cougar behind him. And they'll set their offense now. The question is, will Coach Mose go for one? He's pacing with his hands in his pocket, is Coach Mose. Kale gives his dribble up, goes down to Cougar in the corner. Cougar working hard. He's going to go high off the glass off of Simonese, and it's now 16 to 9. Cougs, great footwork from Cougar. I love that. Five points for Cougar. 13 seconds to go. Nine points just for Conestoga in this quarter. And in the paint is Simonese. No, that's going to be, uh, of course, a shot up by Jack Welch that won't go. The Blue Jays oh, get a beautiful a pass. pass down to Shepard. Oh, my goodness gracious. What an assist. Man alive, Dane Jacobson looked like that quarterback out in the gridiron <laughs> that he was this fall, wasn't he? That was beautiful. It was, and you know how many times in that in that quarter right there did we see Evan Shepard get loose on a run? Um, right. You know, he's a speedster, he's a track star, he's a Shrine Bowl guy. We love to mention that up here, and Kale's a quarterback, Dane's a quarterback. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty fun to watch these guys play yeah. a little football and basketball court. Yeah, that's the key to the fast break. There is no fast break if you're not running the floor ahead of the ball, and that's what you got there. You got somebody out, hit, out leading the break, and uh, the ball will find you. That's what we tell our players all the time. You run, the ball will find you. Well, I got to tell you, two quarterbacks there, Kel Jacobson and Dane Jacobson, with two absolutely gorgeous passes there at the end of that first quarter. Hey, a big shout-out going out 
to Amy Clark. Uh, and I got to tell you, she's down in Kansas City. We are so thinking about you, Amy. And um, I know that there's a bunch of Bowens listening down tonight, <laughs> down in Kansas. And Jack, by the way, Jack Clark, uh, our protege out there in Indianapolis listening tonight as well. But Amy, we are thinking about you. And, uh, and and so grateful that that you're you're listening tonight and watching tonight. So, what a family that is, huh? You bet. I love having them around. Uh, Amy always puts a smile on my face. <laughs> Luke, great pla great player on the basketball team, and Jack, one of the best drive kids we ever had. Uh, he is indeed. He's got a great future ahead of him. So here we are, underway in the second quarter. Blue Jays up nine after a couple of absolutely. Phenomenal passes to get a couple of buckets, but Byrne, look at Byrne with that left hand off the glass. That was not an easy shot. He knocks it home. And he showed a lot of right-hand drives in the first game that we played. I remember right, he had 11 points in the first quarter, so one-on-one um, -on -one matchups on the outside will give him some lanes to work tonight. Max working out near the timeline. Connor Stogan, that man-to-man. -man. They're, uh, they're switching screens. See if the Blue Jays have that attack. That Kale working hard off the block, and there it is off the glass, working against Simonese. It's 20 to 11. Too patient, Kale Jacobson. There, he gets to his spot, he holds his ground, and he waits until he has the shot he wants. There's a reach in and a foul on one of the big blue. I don't know if that was on Kale Jacobson, and it is. No, Evan Shepard. Yeah. And so that will be the first on Evan, and the second team foul on the big blue. And here comes a stack play here on the elbows. They're going to get it out to Fox. Conestoga working hard against this Blue JD. It is not easy to score against what has been a defense giving up less than 38 points a game. Here comes Welch. Brooks Kissinger switched over to him as Fox will drive down. Big pass on the far side. Conestoga's just got to be patient, don't they, Coach? Yeah, they. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I watched them play is that they know what they want, and they're willing to work for it. They don't just take anything. And Fox they're, kick it out to the corner of Berg, and Berg in the paint. Go ahead, Coach, finish that uh, They're well coached, you can tell. They, they know what they're looking for. They are indeed, and there's some quick hands by Kale Jacobson. Knocks it out of bounds, and Fox will take it out right in front of Riley Kozeski and Maxwell Bender. And, they put their hands together just to let him know they're there. And here comes a long court. Yeah, here comes Kale. Will he rip it home? Yeah! Ah! Rip in there, folks. Let's go. <laughs> Hear that crowd, man. It's electric in here. Bring some energy. <laughs> Look at Kale go defensively. He is getting after it. And we got a timeout, Coach Barron. <laughs> <laughs> and he's having a little conversation with the senior guard. Doesn't like that pass, I think, on the sideline. And Kale at 6'4", who can really jump. That ball had a little too much air underneath it, and you knew what was coming. Yeah, yeah, he was waiting for that one. He was going to make that happen, I think, one way or another. Jordan, uh, those rim benders are something that Kale Jacobson has really patented this year, hasn't he? I'll tell you what, uh, it's not a sight that I'm getting used to seeing. Every time he does it, it still kind of puts me back in my seat. You know, and even that one, he didn't have the lane the whole way. He kind of stole that around the three-point line, really gathered himself, exploded up, and, man, I'll tell you what, he's not taking it easy on the rims this year. <laughs> he is not, and so it is now 22 to 11. And I thought a brilliant time out there by Coach Aarons. The crowd's going nuts. The momentum's going against him. Probably rattled him. He took a quick timeout. And let's see how Conestoga fares. As Welch working against Kale, gave his dribble up early. There's that double team. The brothers are all over him. And now they knock the ball out of bounds off of Brooks Kissinger. You know, Blue Jays do a lot of things to create pace. Right now, they're just doubling the first pass. And uh, that just really shows a commitment to creating chaos on the defensive end. Back the other way comes Welch. Kale almost had another pickpocket there. They're really pressuring up on the ball. Never a good sign either when you, your offense gets moved out way beyond the arc, right. is it? And here comes Welch. He's going to fire it up. Won't go. Max Parker with a great block out of Berg. And he'll hand it off to the senior captain. Kale just going to attack the rim. Off to glass, and it will roll. And too smooth, Kale Jacobson with the bucket. Back at it again, showing a great touch, a little left-hand finger roll. Uh, Kale just using that transition opportunity, latent transition opportunity. Kale having a little conversation with official Alex Johnson. He thought he was fouled on that bucket. And Alex just 
Shook his head, no. Back the other way they come to Welch. Welch getting a pick. But they still double. What a pass inside to Berg. Good look inside by Fox. Berg working hard. Max with the rejection. And will it be saved? No. Brixie couldn't save it. It went out of bounds. But Parker, who averages just over one block a game, got his there. <laughs> kind of had to bail out Dane as they went through those scrambles. Or I mean, maybe it was Dane on the, on the underside of Brooks. But uh, that's Berg's game down there. And Max came over on help side and sent that ball up in the third row. Max Parker. What a player this kid is. 6'6". Six, six. Jump out of the gym, loves the game of basketball. And here's Welch, spin in the paint, floater, and it goes. Nicely done by Jack Welch. Kale being a little physical with his hips on defense there. Welch kind of pulls the chair out, shows a spin move, and has an open four-footer. Welch averaging over 12 points a game, and here's Kale. He's just going to continue to attack that rim. Found Consum, though, with a beautiful spin move wow. himself. And there's Cougar. Hey, that's a sight for sore eyes. I'll put a smile on someone's face who's not trying to smile. He's playing well tonight. That was a beautiful little move. Seven points for Cougar. Speaking of coach, and here's Fox again. Gets a man to come out on him. He'll hit the little floater himself. And Coach Mo's not happy with Max Parker there. Because I think he wanted Max to stay back. And look at Brooks Kitzinger off the rim. But they're going to say it's on the floor. I'll tell you, any, any coach who's in charge of defense, I'm not sure basketball teams do that, but if you got a <laughs> defensive coordinator right now on your they basketball do. team, they're not happy. Yeah, they do. Both teams kind of kind of getting to the rim and scoring, not at ease, but at, yeah. a, high, at a high percentage right now. Yeah, I definitely like you, the game plan is to attack the paint. What a nice entry pass, but little brother not able to hit that. Kale found his little brother, Dane, and Dane just a little bit short to the rim. 26-15. Conestoga trying to weather this storm right now. Look at that double team again. Here's a one-handed pass to the corner to Simonis, and he stepped out of bounds. Oh, and he hit a beautiful tray. But, man, the job they're doing on Simonis. He has yet to score. He had 25 last night. Yeah, they're well aware where he's at. By the way, do we have a halftime interview? That's OK. I don't know why you guys are looking at me. No. <laughs> <laughs> We can find one what, right yeah. here. Right, how about, we got one right here. I think we got to get Jason Leibel up here. Oh, he'll love that. There he's go. down on the front row, and uh, he's our superintendent. Lots to discuss, and he's always a great interview. But now zone for Coach Aarons. This 1-2-2. Two, two. The Blue Jays up 26-15. And here's Jacobson working off to Brixie. Bounce pass down the block. Drake Zimmerman checking in, and he took an extra step. And Drake does a beautiful job defensively. He's had a little bit of a problem with, with, with travel so far this year. Just yeah. working on it. I didn't catch every single second of that, uh, unless it happened earlier, unless he stepped without the dribble initially. Uh, that's, that's a move I like from Drake. But you look, he was getting into a kick out three to Cougar. So that's that's good stuff. Don't kid yourself, though, with Drake Zimmerman, man. He makes a deep, uh, difference defensively. And now here's Fox attacking this Blue Jay man to man. Drake Zimmerman. Over Simonese, 2.57 to go. And there's a screen. Simonese going to dump it off. But the Blue Jays so quick. And the bounce pass because of Kale Jacobson's defense really forced a near turnover there because Kale was all over. Hey, did you Michael. did you text Libel? No. So text him and see he, if he can get he up He texted here. us. Yes. Okay. So, so get him up here. <laughs> tell, him, tell him that's how he's going to get his air time. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Coach, I'm trying, to figure out. I'm trying to figure out here. Coach might know this. Is my, are we forcing left or forcing away from baseline? Force uh, middle. Force weak. Force left. Yeah, weak. We can't. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a big guiding principle. So that would not be. Oh. And that time, Lane Fox went in with that right hand to the rim. But Coach Hubert, great call there. Coach Mose loves to go to their weak hand. Yep. I know that's part of his. And uh, so maybe you can explain to the folks here at home as Evan Shepard says, I'm going to split some defenders and put it off the glass to give the Blue Jays a 13-point lead. But what you're talking about there to the, to well, the folks at that, home. What that also does for you is you put that ball in somebody's weak hand, it, that passing leads, good passing leads to good shooting, right? So if you can force them to pass and drive with a weak hand, it'll cut down on some of those three-point opportunities. Great analysis there as Kale Jacobson gets a screen, kicks it back out to a wide open Consum. No good off the back of the rim, and Evan will track it down. Cougar says, I'm going to try again. Bingo! <laughs> hey, good shooters don't miss twice. That's a great job by his teammates <laughs> believing in him, and even a better shot stepping into those confidently. 
Double figures now for Konzum. A nice job. Simony's going to attack the rim from the right side. Dumps it off to Bird, who hits a left-handed layup. But there was a foul prior to that. And it will be on the floor, so Welch will take it out underneath the bucket. In comes Dane Jacobson. Out goes Evan Shepard. And again, you'd be seeing Kate Bridges at this point in the game, actually much sooner than this. He normally comes in about the four-minute mark, but he's got that injury. And so Coach Moe's now late in the season got to figure out, what do I do with number seven? Because he's got six guys that consistently come in. So where will that seventh guy come in, and how much will they play a seven? And, Coach, maybe you've got some thoughts on what that's like for a coach to have to figure out. Well, generally speaking, as, as the season goes along, you shorten your bench a little bit um, because you've kind of figured out the rotations and you've figured out your own players. Here's a steal. Handoff to Kissinger. Left-handed layup makes it 33-15. So a lot of times you do cut down on your substitutions because it takes kids out of rhythm and that when you sub too much. So I think he's got a fairly short bench. Kissinger with his first bucket. Here's a pass over Simonis. Bingo! He knocks it down. And that's a kid who can shoot. That was a matter of time. You're right. And that's something we saw last night as well where got up to maybe a little slower start than he'd liked and then look out. He yep. just went bonkers. Yeah, he's going to find a, find a way to, to hit the three. So, How good has Simone's been in the last five games, folks? He has shot 72% from beyond the arc. He's 23 of 32. Averaged over 23 points a game. And for the season, he's shooting 46% now from beyond the arc. Uh, and now he's up to his average to 17 points per game as we have a timeout here from Coach Aarons. But that is absolutely scintillating scoring there. Uh, last five games shooting 72% on 32 takes. Well, what's very interesting about that stat is that um, you said that was the last five games? Last five, yeah. Well, usually by this point in the year, you've, uh, you've, most teams have scouted and they've figured out who can shoot it and who can't. So to continue to do that this late in the year is very impressive. Jordan, you've seen some good scores, but uh, this one ranks right up there, doesn't he, in Simonis? Yeah, you know, a lot of it's opportunity and it, opportunity and how you convert in those opportunities. So uh, being an athletic guy, he creates those opportunities for himself and um, he, he uses space when he gets a shot off. So he can score it. He scored in bunches. Well, he will have the ball right now in the backcourt against the Blue Jay defensive specialist, Brooks Kissinger. Brooks with just two points tonight, but man, he's done a great job defensively on Simonese and gotten some help. Here's a beautiful pass to Savanda, who lost the handle. Max comes out with the ball. Under 30 seconds to go. Coach Mose, I think they're going to play for one here. Kale working against Fox. And he says, hey, if you're going to give me the lane, I'm going to go all the way. I don't think that was intended, but he said, why not? No help coming in there. Misses the bucket, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, I think pretty much you think they were in a layup only mode where they really didn't want to shoot it, but they had to. It's kind of happened a couple times this year where, you know, guys think Kale's going to wait and he gets deep enough that it's like, all right, this is a this is a great shot. Yeah. And it happened to Milford. They just kept chasing him out, chasing him out, chasing him out. And there's only so many times you can go by a guy before you take advantage of the lane you have. So. And the only thing you worry about is maybe getting two here, but maybe giving up three down here. Yeah, that, that'd one. be one. So we'll see how this turns out. Well, the 80% free throw shooter goes one for two, and now we got 10 seconds. And oh, could have been a poke in the eye there. Michael, I think the fans here are not happy and probably have a beef. And here's a travel going to be called on Fox. All right. Here, Co Coach Aaron's out on the court arguing that. He's, he's not happy. Here's, here's what I think coming back the other way. And he Aaron's has every right. You know, unintentional poke in the eye can go either way. Um, Kale gets a one dribble, he scores it. Here we go, <laughs> one dribble, but he's not going to hit the bucket. And uh, we'll go into halftime with 34-18, the score. And let's see if we've got Jason Lyle we got coming up here. We got Good. No, no, you, you keep yours here, but you keep yours. No. Oh, yeah, you know, you guys, this is your opportunity since you both work here at the school to ask him a couple of questions. If I ask questions, he's going to get too goofy. That's the thing. That's my boss. You know, he's he's your boss, right. but, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a teacher and a coach, so oh. I got to give up mine. Well, <laughs> this is going to be great. I haven't had a chance to talk to Jason Leibel all year, and finally, 
He reaches <laughs> out. He sends us a text message. He's got a little bit of microphone envy going on here with uh, with Coach Hubert. <laughs> he says, Coach Hubert gets the mic tonight. I don't. And so we were like, we got to get him up here tonight and, and chat with him. And honestly, lots of good things to talk about with Jason Leibel, our superintendent here at Ashland Greenwood. First, first off, it's been way too long since you've been on one of our broadcasts. It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah I finally got the invite. I'm down having a Pepsi with my boy Strahan and Tommy and uh, – I get called to duty here, so <laughs> no, I appreciate the uh, appreciate the time. Well, there's sure a lot to talk about. First off, let's just talk a little bit about how fun this has been this year on both the girls' side and the boys' side. You look at this crowd tonight; it's full. As a superintendent, when you got teams like this competing at this level and full crowds every night, really has to instill some pride in the program, doesn't it? It's a, it's a lot of fun, you know. And our, our coaches, our girls' program, boys' program, wrestling programs—they put a great product on the floor. Uh, the kids really grow and progress throughout the year. They do things the right way, and that's modeled by our coaches as well. So I think our folks just really enjoy watching them play and perform, and uh, from the parents, the grandparents, to just people that want to watch some good basketball. So it's been a lot of fun, and then that also feeds into the culture of the school as well. I always felt like when you have success on the, whether it's fine arts or success on the athletic playing field, that really builds the culture of the overall school. Yeah, so it's, been, it's been fun. And sorry to interrupt you, the fine arts part as well has been fantastic. And listen, you've had a full play. Uh, and, and so that's why I'm amazed you found the time to make it up here. <laughs> We've got a school going in here to the north. Uh, you've had a lot of things to deal with, and, uh, and something, of course, that we've all been dealing with COVID. But let's start first with that school to the north. You bet. It's coming along. It's looking great. Give us an update on that. Yeah, it's uh, construction's gone really, really well. Of course, weather has uh, played a lot of favors for us here. Uh, this week's a little bit tough. I think this is the first day in a long time that they weren't able to work just because of the conditions. But, um, you know, we, we moved from a precast building to a masonry building, which put us behind schedule by about three months. However, we're on that target right now. Um, we're a little worried about products and workforce, but everything's come together. Things are arriving on time, and the walls are going up, roofs going on, um, infrastructure's going on in on a pre-K2 building. It's going to be a beautiful structure, beautiful facility for our kiddos. We're excited. And I know that this has been out in the news and all of that, so just update us. When will students be going in your best prediction? So our, our pre-K-2 kids, we'll make that transition to the building um, December of 2022. Um, so we'll be doing a mid-year move. Not ideal, um, but when you're moving, uh, say, three separate grade levels, uh, preschool, uh, kindergarten, first, second grade, sorry, four, we feel like we can make that transition fairly fairly easily. Um, and in the uh, middle school uh, building, kind of the same time frame, but uh, December of 2023. So we're hopeful to be in there at the start of the school year um, in 2022 and 2023, but market conditions, uh, products, workforce, it's been a little bit a little bit of a challenge. And I think everyone can understand that. It doesn't matter what sure. you're looking for these days. Uh, the scarcity of some items are out there, right. and I think everyone understands that. Um, and obviously, we, you know, enrollment just continues to go up, doesn't it? It does. Uh, again, you know, we're in a great location, obviously. However, I think, again, we talked about our athletic programs, fine arts. I think as a school district, we offer a great product. You know, I think we really invest in our kids. We, we build strong relationships. We have high expectations. Um, when I transitioned here from uh, the school up north, uh, that was one of the things I noticed right away, that there's high expectations across the board, whether it's fine arts, athletics, and especially academics. And I had an eighth grade daughter at that time transition in, and she noticed that as well, that there was just high expectations for academics. And as a parent, that was music to my ears, and the same as administrator. So, um, yeah, I think we're going continue, to continue to see that growth. I think housing's opening up. Um, we're seeing a lot of new housing, uh, new development uh, south of town on Whitetail, and New development uh, kind of wrapped around the new school buildings. Uh, folks are going to continue to come. And I know you're going to take this with a great deal of pride, you should. And I shared this with Brad Jacobson, but I've talked to two different families that moved here recently. And when they were looking you know, to relocate and move to a new place, one of the things that they said is the educational system just stood way out. And that is why they wanted to come to Ashland Greenwood. And I think that's, that's a great to hear. of your leadership and, of course, some great teachers and administrators, right. isn't it? It really is. You know, the, the hiring process is so important. You know, and it's a, we put out a little tweet uh, introducing our new director of learning today. Yes. And, and, you know, it's about finding the right people and the right fit. And, um, I, again, I think just like we have parents and they want to have their kiddos here, I think we have teachers that are in the educational field that want to be here 
as well. So when we're hiring, we have deep pools. It's competitive, and I think it provides us an opportunity to get some really strong folks, and even including Coach Hubert over here. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, he's been great. And we're going to talk about sports in a minute. I know he's got a couple questions for you. But before we do, hey, let's have an opportunity to meet our new director of learning. Tell us a little bit about her, because okay. uh, I know that, that you made an announcement today. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Danny Deer Beerbaum is coming from David City Public School. She was at Blair prior to that. She's been a, a middle school principal, elementary principal. She's done some curriculum work, uh, young family. She's excited to get to our community. Um, she's going to be rock solid. You know, big shoes to fill with Jill Finke. Jill's going to transition to my office and fill the big shoes of Carrie Holtz. Uh, excited to get, get uh, Jill in my office, but Danny's going to she's going to be a rock star for us. We're excited. Well, this is more of a comment than a question. Then I'm going to give it over to Coach Hubert and let him grill you a little bit. He's oh dying to do this. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just, again, want to commend you and, and your staff. Uh, the last couple of years have been very challenging, very trying, and you guys have been way out front with leadership. Uh, I, I mean, honestly, what you guys have gone through. And then, of course, just your staff, you know, working every right. with all the challenges that, you know, it's, it's tough to find substitutes across the, the country, sure. today, substitute teachers. You guys have been amazing. So, again, kudos for all the things well, thanks, that you Tim. had to deal with. Yeah, our, our teachers were rock stars. I mean, they, they hung in there. Um, you know, I think they understood the importance of keeping kids in school and the value of education. And and they, uh, they kept grinding. They kept working hard. And, um, you know, I think hopefully for our kiddos there wasn't a great amount of drop-off, even though we had to shut our doors for – about three months there, but we've been able to keep kids in school. That's the best place for them to be and keep that instruction happening. And we owe it all to our, our teachers, our support staff, from our paras, custodians, our, our nutrition staff providing lunches over the summer. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of a lot of hard work. It's, it's been a grind, but finally starting to feel like maybe we're turning the corner on this thing. Well, I got to tell you, we've got uh, this, uh, this guy that's just been chomping at the bit, Dave Hubert. <laughs> To get a chance, because you know you interviewed him. Now he's going to turn the table. Yes, so I got, I got scary. two things. Oh, I want to hear it. Well, number one, uh, are you good at trivia? Not really. Well, <laughs> sports, <laughs> sports trivia maybe, but well, when I came here, everybody talked about how involved, like our girls will play and then go cheerlead for the boys game. You bet. How involved they are. Can you name a guard on the former basketball team that also starred in Bye Bye Birdie, which is the th uh, the the uh, musical here at this school. I can number not, ten. I cannot, Dave. Uh, you you got your <laughs> oh t Tim Washburn. <laughs> I thought it came. I thought it was like five years ago. No. So that was like a right hundred years oh, ago. Oh, Tim Washburn. Yeah. yeah, he was very. They said he sang. Well, all I time. hope he sang better than he shot bye a basketball. Bye. I've heard stories about it. I've heard stories, well, but that, uh, hey, right here, I was the only guy number that 10. averaged more turnovers than points okay. in his career. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, second thing hey, is, yeah, yeah. Let's well, they, the they real yeah. quick here. They. Uh, um, I was talking to somebody about you, and they said you were a heck of a player. <laughs> they said you were the all-time leading shooter. Shooter, yeah. But they didn't say score or no, no, no. percentage, I, but didn't say where. Yeah. I, I got my shots up, Dave. Yeah. My, my philosophy was shoot or shoot, you know, yeah. and, and if you're well, in a slump, you shoot your way out of it. Where was that? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lewiston, Lewiston, Nebraska, Class D1 basketball okay. down in God's Country down there, Prue State Bobcat. Oh, got it. Pride. Hey, but I will say I did hold a school record for number take charges in the season really? so i did play I, that's because you were too slow I, to I did, that's way. right i had full feet but I, <laughs> hey and i can sell it big time i was an actor like tim here i guess <laughs> i guess i should have been in bye bye birdie i don't, I don't know so. hey this was awesome i'm so glad we called you up. we got to do this more often yeah appreciate it guys so uh, uh dave had an awesome season uh, thank you yep look forward to the future yep. here tim uh, thanks for absolutely. all you do and i know you got mark jumping yeah. at the bit here so Jason, thanks all right again. thanks Jason guys Lyle appreciate Wall, it superintendent yep. here at ashton greenwood and mark we didn't leave you a whole lot of time here, brother, but we'll let you jump in here. The key stat, yes. 15 of 20 from the field, 75% wow. for the Blue Jays. Two of three from three for Cougar Consum, 67%. Cale Jacobson is two of three from the line. They are seven of 15, 47%. Two of five from three, two of two from the line. We've out-rebounded them nine to five. Turnovers, they have nine, we have five. Mark, you are a champ to do it that quick. Thank you, big shot. And uh, that's Mark Adele on the stats for us tonight. 75% Blue Jays are smoking from the field. Oh, the play. So here we go. <laughs> We're underway here in the third quarter. And Max Parker has yeah. it. 
And Tim. he gets it to Kissinger down on the block, who's going to try reverse slap, and he'll get it to go. Blue Jays come out hot. They do, and Tim, we're plotting against you over here, so we got a little <laughs> surprise at the, the next time out. So that's what Hubert was talking about. <laughs> I can only imagine that. Listen, Danny Krinwink was really the star of that, but here comes, uh, here comes Conestoga the other way. Oh, man, this is going to be rough. <laughs> Simonese, just with that one bucket today, the Blue Jays really wanted to slow him down, and, boy, they have been successful at that, haven't they? Yep, he can, uh, he can get after it. 36, 18, 705 to go here in the third. And here's oh. Evan Shepard, the track star, with a two-on-one break to Brooks. Back to Evan, right-handed lamp is good. And that is some nice ball share in there. Yeah, quick hands and quick finishes for both Evan and Brooks. So Shepard having a big offensive night as well. And the Blue Jays stay in that. One, two, two, three, quarter court pressure. Michael with a bounce pass to the corner. Simonese has a shot blocked by Max. Second block of the night for Parker. That's demoralizing, isn't it? Yeah. I think Max was looking to leak out there and, and throw one down like uh, Kale did. <laughs> and there's that screen and then a reach and a foul. Coming up here, I think they're going to call it on Cougar Cons. And Tim, I didn't get the chance to hear uh, the live interview at half, but I got a text from my buddy Tannen out in Whitetail, and he said that was an elite halftime interview. <laughs> said elite. That's the phrasing he used. Well, leave it to Jason Leibel <laughs> yeah. to get us in stitches up here. And, uh, boy, we're lucky to have him as a superintendent. He has done, boy, he's had everything thrown at him in the last two years, three years, and he has just responded beautifully. Here is Bird from 15 off the back of the rim, and the rebound coming down to Jacobson. Kale yeah, with a crossover, going to dump it off to Shepard, or make that Cougar. Look at Brooks go, crossover, working hard against Simonese off the glass, 40 to 18. Brooks created contact the whole way down the lane as he went, and he just constantly fight for his position, and really uh, rewarded him with a great position for a shot. Here comes Welch. He has his shot partially blocked, I think, by Max Parker. And they said it went out of bounds on the Cougars. And Coach Moses arguing that it should have been an over and back on that pass, as you saw them come up the court. I don't think he thought the Welch had established on the other side of the court. That could get a little tricky. That call um, is difficult. Three, difficult. Three points of contact. Yep. Here comes Kissinger working off the right side. They get it in to Parker. Parker looking. And play a little catch out front. Crossover. Look at Kale working there. Ball fake and got Michael up and then hits it off the glass. Too smooth. Kale Jacobson back at it again. Just really patient, really strong on the inside. Uh, getting guys out of out of position and finishing well. Good job by Kale. Here comes, and there's a quick whistle. What do we have here? Foul on the Blue Jays. Don't forget, folks, we've got a doozy coming up next. Lincoln Christian. Lincoln Luther will battle right here in the birdcage. We're going to stick around, call it for you as well. We can't wait. It's going to be a ton of fun. And that thing could go deep into the fourth quarter, yep. I'm thinking. So the Cougars giving it all they got. Down 42-18. There's a double team on Simonese. Has the ball tipped and tracking it down as Bird. Back to Noah. Simonies will split two defenders. Left hand and layup acrobatic. He's got five tonight. Cuts it to 22. Evan Shepard's going to try his own acrobatic moves. And with that left hand, touches it off the glass. Doing a lot of really good things, but the biggest thing Evan's doing tonight is he's finishing at a high percentage. you got to imagine he's around 70, 80 uh, percent from great spots tonight. 14 for Shepard. Simonies feeling it. That time doesn't touch anything, and Kale Jacobs is going to run out of there, and he'll be fouled by Fox. I'm they amazed at how uh, the last three shots have been point blank at the block. We are getting to where we need to get. Um, I'm a, because this is a pretty good defense. They've been rotating, and uh, maybe they're getting real tired. I don't know. Well, that's a great uh, call to coach as well. I mean, the one thing, the Blue Jays shooting just ridiculously well from the field this year. And as a coach, I got to imagine it's because you believe they're just taking some really good shots. Well, Coach Mose told me a couple days ago that we are shooting 40% as a team, I believe, from behind the, the arc. Yes. Which is phenomenal. Uh, for our team, everybody, you know. Um, but 
Yep, 40%. Yeah, and to in order to get those kind of threes, there's a lot of inside out action, and I think part of it is our ability to get to the paint. And if you can't drive or you can't get some inside out action, uh, it is difficult to get that kind of percentage from the three. And Jordan, you've been at these practices. How do they coach that? When you were on the staff a few years back, how do they coach for that? What yeah. are some of the things that they do in practice to make sure they're getting that? I think the first thing they do is, is be highly skilled and have, uh, you know, Moe's really loves the rip and go. He really loves the jab and go. Um, if you've got guys that can break down, get to the spot. And then he preaches so hard about playing off two feet, playing off two feet. So um, I see playing off two feet as unselfish. You're not locking yourself into a one-hand, one-foot finish. Mm -hmm. Rather, you're creating opportunities for your teammates, and you're also creating good shots for yourself. So. Break down, play off two feet. Moses, that's a staple of Moses' program. Got a little zone here. And here we go. Coach calls it out right away. He's been seeing it on the bench for a few years as Jacobson will kick it out top. They're going to work into the corner to Max. Great job that time by Simonese to jump him. And now we got a whistle and a little hold on one of the Cougars. I'm suspicious that they're going to that zone because they couldn't keep us. Last three possessions were point blank. If you can't keep somebody on the paint, it's going to be hard. Hard time uh, stopping them. So I, I think that that's what that zone is about. And Coach Aaron's, and by the way, we got some bodies flying and now foul. We talked about his coaching tree last night. His father, Rick, of course, won two state titles. Coached boys, he coached girls. Uh, and so that was a huge influence. Then he had Mike Weiss, the great coach of Bishop Newman, who won multiple state titles as Kale hits that first free throw. Uh, and, you know, he has just been influenced by some great ones. He coached with Todd Eisner as a grad assistant, who Todd Eisner played at Creighton and went on to some great things as well, and Kale hit that second one. Um, and, of course, you know, you, you get that, you know this guy is built for coaching. Yeah, he has a very good temperament. You see him discussing things with the officials but not screaming at them. You know, I, I like that. Both coaches do that. It's very impressive. Very calm demeanor, and here's a steal by Simonese. 46 20. The Blue Jays up 26 here. And they're going to hand the ball off to Fox, work it around the right side. Here comes Berg in the paint. Berg with his left hand. There's the third block of the night by Max Parker. Crowd chanting defense. His student body never gives up. As well, trying to work through Cougar Conzum, but he drug his pivot foot, and they call the trap. That, that back foot sliding a little bit as he went to reposition it, but uh, you know, I think the Blue Jays are really looking for a good offensive possession here. We see a Shepard checking into the game. Um, let's find ways to break down that zone and, and create some opportunities here. Just two points for Conestoga in almost five minutes of the third quarter. Luke Clark checking in the game. His grandpa watching down in Kansas tonight. His mom's watching in Kansas City. Just celebrated a birthday not long ago, and look at that feed by Clark to a cutting Kissinger. Great look Luke's, by the junior. Luke's a good basketball player. He can drive, he can shoot, he can cut, uh, he can pass, and you know Luke's giving good minutes right now for the Blue Jays. What, what year is he? He's a junior. Junior. Yep, junior. And he'll hit the weights too this offseason. Look at this move by the chairman of the board who knocks it off the glass. Good touch, good little bank float from about eight feet. Um, getting, in, getting by guys and then finishing before the help side defender can get to you. And now kill Jake or make that Dane Jacobson. Yeah, he got hit on that shot down there, offhand. I I uh, or head. Cheek, high cheekbone, it looked like. This is one tough kid. He was the starting quarterback on the football team last year. Started as the third string quarterback in August. Two weeks to go before the season. He's the third string quarterback. And then Kale, of course, who just couldn't play basketball because he was still recovering from the ACL. And the second string quarterback goes down and look out. Kale, or Dane goes on to have a phenomenal sophomore season. And now we got a whistle and a foul. And so Max Parker's going to go to the line. And I know a guy rooting for Dane Jacobson is a guy named Hunter Washburn, who was the quarterback a couple years before that, and sent him a couple of texts. And he got that starting job because Hunter had the same thing as a sophomore. And I think he knew the nerves that go into that when you're starting as a sophomore. That's not an easy role, is it? Uh, baptism by fire is what they call that. Uh, you know, you get thrown in the mix early with a big Wayne game. He had that early in the season. Big Wahoo game, and uh, Dane, Dane was a special kid this year. 
Boy, he was. Is that a relative of yours? Yeah, I think just just kind. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes I claim him. Right. Right. <laughs> Had to work that in. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Michael <laughs> off the back of the rim. And Shepard with the long rebound, and look at Evan Go is on a track right here, and off the glass, Evan is in fuego tonight. He's like a little field mouse running no. around, skipping about. No, uh, he shoots right-handed from the left side. Does he always do that? He's just an athlete, you know. He's he just getting, do whatever. He's getting to his spots, and yeah, he's yeah. He's, he's finishing well by yeah. the rim. Yeah, coach, have you seen hang time like that? Jordan and I love to that's talk a, about his hang time. That's thing. unbelievable. <laughs> First time I saw him was at a track meet last year when I was new here and just kind of start to sub and incredible incredible hurdler well, here's a shot that just about fell that would have been a beautiful shot himself if fox had gotten that to fall but couldn't get it to go so blue jays holding on to this 29 point lead i love that nickname though looked like a little field mouse running down the, <laughs> well, don't, the court well don't think i didn't notice your subtle little uh <laughs> lithosphere stratosphere <laughs> jab <laughs> Oh, that's a great story we're going to have to tell sometime. And Jordan was trying desperately, we have a foul on the court, trying desperately to give up a compliment to Evan Shepard. And I said, he went into the stratosphere. And Jordan said, no, he went into the lithosphere, <laughs> yeah. thinking, you know, and I even reached out to the astronaut Clay Anderson, who said, yeah, actually, he's going in the wrong direction. Dennis Stilly <laughs> right. said he's going in the wrong right. direction. Right. right. Lithosphere is the top crest of the earth. Right. So. I'm a science teacher, so I, I remember that right, I on need, Twitter or something. I need you about a month ago. Because I actually had to look that up or something. I was like, what is going on here? Oh, I love it. <laughs> we have some fun up here. Is Max Parker having some fun? He just banged it in off the glass to make it 53 22. And here's a bounce pass going to be stolen by Cougar. This defense has been absolutely suffocating here in the third quarter for the Big Blue. Shepard, an attack against Fox. There's Parker on the right baseline drive. Look at that spin move. He'll go off the glass. Good touch, but it won't go. Cougar put back, and Ponsum can't get it to fall. Cougar going after it. Luke Clark with the fadeaway and the bucket. Greg Marshman might wave this off. Let's see. He is. Yeah, it would have been cool. I'm, I'm, I want that for Luke, but uh, yeah, no shot, yeah. no yeah. shot. Oh, Do you agree boy. with that? Well, yeah. I mean, if, if, if this was the NBA and Luke was making a couple million a year, he'd get that. Yeah, but, but not in high, high school. school basketball. We don't get continuation. No. So the guy impeded Luke's space. Luke flew back, shot the ball as he flew back. So I think it's a good call. It'd have been really cool if, if they would have gave yeah, it to yeah. him. But. Here's some good news. Dane Jacobson checking in. He's left with an injury, and Kale, his brother, tries to find him underneath. A lot of brotherly love between these two. Definitely. You know, you, I mean, know. you grow up with a guy playing. Kale, Kale was uh, probably beating up on Dane his whole life, and so I'm sure Dane's pretty excited to have him <laughs> on his team now. That's right. I don't want to be on the opposite end of it anymore. I have a feeling he still might be at home as Kale Dumps it off to Luke Clark and the junior gets the assist from Kale and knocks it in. Nice, nice, unselfish pass. And so here comes Simonese. He's got to be a bit frustrated. He has just been on fire coming into this game with just five points tonight. And now a whistle on the foul on the Blue Jays with 5.9 to go. You know, we talk on the other end about playing off two feet. So uh, Kale could have elevated and tried to wrap up and finish, but. Plays off two and finds a cutting Luke Clark. So unselfish on, on very many levels. Well, here's a bucket. It's put up and another foul on Max. Max is saying, hey, I didn't foul. He looks right at his coach. And Coach Mo says, yeah, yeah you did. <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. When you start swatting, though, it's really hard not to have the official call that, right? When your arms are swatting around and yeah. slapping. And so here no. comes Berg, his first free throw up, no good. Now Kissinger just checked out, right? Yes. Oh, he, he's number 10, is that correct? Yeah, he's number 10. Number 10. Uh, All right. know, I think that brings up a great debate as yeah. to who are the greatest number 10s in Ashland Greenwood history. Yeah, that would be, there was a lot of them. There was a lot of them. Uh, John Stockton, there were several. Oh, look at Dave <laughs> shot the button. I don't know where this is going, but oh, it doesn't feel good. I'll tell you what. You know, Tim, uh, we talked a little bit about your playing. Tell me to go ahead and take over this third quarter break right here. We talked a little bit about your playing days. I'm going to do my best to, to get this on the screen so that we can see it at home. Oh, no. But we have the Tim Washburn. <laughs> now, Brett, Brett, there you go. There, there you go. go. Oh, man, a lot. Look at those. Look at those. Oh, man, did they have oh. a weight room back then? Or? 
<laughs> I, or lunchroom. I don't know. I think that was all 128 pounds yeah. of me right there. Yeah, and I, I can... guarantee you that led to a turnover. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm using my left hand miraculously. So, I see who, that. Who are we playing here? Uh, Let's see. Is that Wahoo or what? Raymond Central? Boy, I can't tell. I'll really? give you the phone, but yeah. Tim, can you walk us through what that game looked like from you? What? That's oh, the Pioneer. That's Nebraska City. Right, Nebraska right, City. Yeah. Walk yeah. us through it, Tim. Tell us you got a photographic memory of what happened in that game. <laughs> oh, well, if, if it's my senior year, we probably got beat 68 to 24. We okay. won four games that year. And they just keep coming. Yeah. Well, Jerry Schofield loves to remind Look me of this. our opening game. We yeah. played Elk. Oh, my God. Look at that hair. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you guys. I mean to tell you. The, and I found a tie somewhere. Yeah, probably on you the did. street it, or something. I like the blue shirt, though. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, I've, I've got that picture from Bob Jensen of you now. Don't forget. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that can be the Lincoln Christian game. That's a bad one. Well, I want to really, see that one. Oh, boy. Oh, man, to have had hair. Oh, <laughs> you guys. Well, that was better than I thought. I was all worried. <laughs> He'll find Parker. He won't get it to go. Yeah, Jerry Scofield loves to remind me. Our junior year, we played Elkhorn. Uh, senior year, and the final score at the end of one was 14-0. to mm. We didn't get a bucket up. Oh, brother. Yeah, I broke my nose that game, too, which uh, that was not fun either. And here we have a whistle and a jump ball. Do you remember who your last high school game was against? I'm like um, in the trivia mood tonight. That is a great question, and I don't. Waverly. Uh, was it? Oh, you, you, you pulled the book out. Yeah. Yeah. D District, you got beat out. Now, now that you say that, I remember that was in that old gym they yeah. had on one side. As yeah. Kissinger will attack the rim and knock it off the glass. And we had a great coach in Larry Raffey. Uh, he won a state title at Johnson, uh, down at uh, Johnson Brock. Uh, but but he had he had to work. Need a little more talent to work with. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Kissinger's free throw up and well, good. Well, according to that picture, it looked like he had plenty. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sitting next to two guys, folks. One who's coached in 10 state championships. I've got Jordan Wallman who's won a state championship. But Kissinger not able to knock that second one down. And then there's me. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> but I've never been in a play, so. <laughs> Oh, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Here come the Cougars up the other way. Credit them. They just continue to work very, very hard. And here's a ball that's knocked out of bounds in front of that Ashton Greenwood crowd. There's Jason Leibel. I think we can pick him up on the camera. And the Cougars going to continue to work against man-to-man -man D. Comes Welch, finds a man in the corner. Simony's trying to get on track. A little too much. Rebound going to come down to Cougar. Lead out to Dane Jacobson. He'll go to the corner to Brooks. Ball fake. Got a man in the air. And then a left-handed pass to Parker. Look at him share the ball, folks, as Cougar has it underneath. And a reverse layup. That's the cherry on top. I mean, how many times did we see them cut and then kick out and then drive and then cut and then kick out and then drive? I think there was three times they broke the defense down, took advantage of a closeout, and then it finishes with a great two-footed finish. It, from it almost seems like they're trying not to be one-dimensional with the three, don't you think? Love There's that. just so many teams are going to scout that, and I think Coach Mose knows that they're going to have to score in many different aspects. And Brooks... We'll try three, but Dane, look at that. Didn't touch the floor, kicked it out to Parker. I just love the unselfishness. As a little between the legs dribble for Kale, but he can't finish there. Max is going to throw it off of Berg's leg. Jordan, you know, the thing I was going to throw out, if, if for kids watching at home, this is the way basketball should be played, the way they share the ball, the way that they give up a shot to find a closer shot, a better shot. Imagine yeah. you guys have got to, to love that. And they're highly skilled, so they can do both. We used to call it a combo player, but everyone we have can shoot and drive, so they're all combo players. Well, and it's it's fun basketball to watch. Very fun basketball to watch. As Luke Clark gets in the paint, kicks it out to Cougar. There's Drake Zimmerman in the game. Talented sophomore. He's working against Michael and finally founds Kissinger near the midcourt strike. Brooks going to get in the paint, and he'll find Dane for that open three. It won't go, and who's going to get it? 
Went out of bounds off of Drake Zimmerman. And I think it hit the school photographer. <laughs> and the student body letting her <laughs> give her a hard time. Elasian Octagon, we got her on camera right now. <laughs> Well, she did a good job of dodging that basketball because it came at her at 100 miles an hour. And here's Michael. We've got a great one next, folks. Lincoln Christian, Lincoln Luther. The battle of the Lincoln schools, the capital city schools in C1. It should be a great one. Stick around for that. As Savannah will work. Drake Zimmerman on Savannah. Savannah has the ball stripped and stolen. Credit Zimmerman on that. Here comes Kissinger. No numbers, but Brooks is going to attack. And he'll go off the glass. And a shot blocked by Savannah. No quit in Conestoga. Here's a three by Michael, a little short. Tracking it down is Kissinger. Drake looks now inside to the Cougar. And uh, now we've got a whistle and a foul on Savannah. Went through him a little bit. And checking in will be Walker Grell and Dawson Teese. And Dawson Teese, it's good to see Dawson getting in. He's got that left wrap around his, or his wrap around his left knee. And uh, he's feeling great, though. I had a chance to talk to his father today. He said he's really feeling good and, and come back from a little bit of a sore knee. Does he play football? You know what? That is so funny. First free throw, good. I, I, I talked to Tyler today, and he... We had this discussion, Jordan and I, and, uh, and his dad went back and listened to it because uh, we really, you know, Jordan, of course, being an All-American tight end, yep. really made a strong case for Dawson being a football player, but he doesn't go out right now. Okay. But he's got the build, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does. That's why he's got some, what is, what is he, 6'3", six, 6'4"? Six, 6'3", and when he went in to have his knees checked, the growth plate is still open. So that, that's what we want. You know, he's, he's a physical kid. And I don't want to like continue to hammer on that from last night's broadcast to earlier talking about Dawson, but he's a huge asset for a kid to be just kind of hard nosed, hard headed, and willing to bang heads a little bit. Well, I got to tell you, fellas, his grandmother listens to us in Lincoln. She sometimes makes it. Tonight she's home. And boy, if I get her name wrong, I'm in some serious trouble. But I believe it's Rhonda Teese listening in Lincoln. <laughs> and uh, she loves the broadcast, and of course she loves her grandson, and she's going to get some good minutes here watching the sophomore work. She'll get a, see a good dose of him on the baseball field this year as well. He's a heck of a pitcher. And here's driving the right side is Welch, and he has the ball knocked out of bounds. Got a couple of people checking in here now for Conestoga. We get those here for you. It looks like Zachariah Smith has checked in, as well as, I believe, Caden Simmer. So here comes Welch to inbounds. They get it in the paint. Working inside there is Sampson. Shot up no good. We got a story on Sampson as well. Now a whistle and a foul. So, Karen Sampson. His uncle uh, was the one, we talked about how uh, Aaron's father, uh, Rick Aaron's, when he was coaching at Valley, they upset Wahoo last night. We talked about that game. Well, Karen's uh, father came up to me tonight and he said, hey, that was my brother who hit that shot, that game-winning shot against Wahoo. And, and they were listening to it last night, listening to the replay. And so what a win that was. Wahoo had won a gazillion games in a row in the 90s, and Rick Aarons coaching at Valley won that game. And they believe it was right here at the Birdcage back in the 90s in the conference championship. Oh, wow. So what a win that was for Rick Aarons when he was coaching Valley. Of course, they were known as Valley then, not D.C. West. And now we have a travel here on Luke Clark. That Wahoo team of the 90s, my goodness, they won and one and one. Well, subtle plug, they won 114 straight. They beat Philly, Nebraska's uh, record of 78 straight. And so that, those are teams that my dad was on. Uh, and then the third longest winning streak is Jim Weeks at Auburn, and that just recently ended this year. So uh, now that was it, Beatrice, right? Philly. Oh, oh Jim Weeks. It's, uh, Auburn. OK. Auburn, he just lost this year, like his 13th game. Ended oh, that's him a current like, streak. It ended at 68 at the start of the year. I think it was in their fifth or sixth game. Yeah, and guess who beat them? Team we're going to have here the next game, Lincoln Luther. 
Uh, beat him on their home court and been three years. There's a bucket nicely done by Karen Sampson. His uncle would be happy to see that. So Lincoln Lutheran beat Auburn. Yep, but back back to Wahoo, sorry. Yes. You go in their gym, you just see Banner. You sit in the ash on the visitor side and just on the opposite end, it's just championship, championship, yeah. championship. Walk the halls, you see giant, giant pictures of championships. So those are, those are some great teams, not to take anything away from them. Well, Wahoo had that youth program figured out way before everybody else did, I think, didn't they? Yeah, yeah they, they sure had a feeder did. program. That's Wahoo's, what was, yeah. Wahoo's was, yeah. is, was and is good. It, it kind of really, uh, you know, I know Newman does a lot of good things as well, but the city of Ashland raised as a whole. So um, the Newman teams were great and the Wahoo teams were right, great right. in the 90s and 2000s and 2010s even. Well, I'll tell you who's watching intently right now is Dawson Tisa's grandmother back in Lincoln, and he just knocks home a free throw to make it 61-28. You talked about that youth program in Wahoo, too. Here's a little trivia for you. Who started that along with Nick Anderson, really the guy that got that going? you have any idea? Was well, it with the school system? Was it? Horton, was it? No. I I believe it was Judge Everett Embody. He's a federal judge now. Oh, I... And uh, Bernie Embody, his son, of course, hit that shot against Pius. And here's a steal by Darren Hill. Darren Hill attacking it, and he'll get the bucket. <laughs> the hard-working senior just keeps this magical season going. Let's go. Nine points on the year. Good for Darren. That's a good My play. Ah. Jumped that passing lane. Yeah, he did. Yes, he did. Boy, proud of him. He has just been making the most of the minutes he's gotten. What a story. He didn't have a jersey to start the season. He worked into it, got a jersey, and since then, he's gotten a lot of the minutes as Sampson puts up a shot with 2.11 to go that won't fall. But. Man, I've just noticed, too, with Darren, the confidence in that kid now. You see him, you talk to him. It's just wonderful to see. It is. And, uh, you know, Mo's, we in media class did some graphics for Mo's for senior day. And Mo's said Mo, Darren's always willing to do whatever it is to help the team win. Darren's gone to practice for four years. He videotaped for three of them. He was starting to videotape and take on a managerial role. But Darren has legitimately gotten so much better at basketball because for four straight years he put his nose to the grindstone and worked at it. And nine points in a in a varsity in a senior varsity season, that's pretty that's a lot. Yeah. Oh and make it 13! Oh. Let's go! Oh. oh Darren, this place is loving him. He's got a field of love tonight. D Hill, D D D. The crowd is chanting. The student body. He's got his own cheer. You gotta love that. And here comes Luke Clark. He gets in the paint, kicks it out. There's Darren. He's gonna attack again. Why not? He's got five points tonight. And he'll work to the corner. Look at Tease handling with the left hand. Nice pass to Zimmerman, who's got a little baseline drive going. Pass into Grell. Grell's looking. Now they'll share it again. Everyone's sharing the ball here on this Blue Jay team. 67-29. Blue Jays are going to go on to play the winner of Lincoln Christian and Lincoln Luther. As Darren Hill will hold it. Bounce pass down the block to Tease. Tease working with his back to the basket. He's fouled on the way. He's going to go to the line. You know what's impressive about that is that a lot of times at the end of a game, kids are really coming out and just trying to, they're throwing it up and they're not really doing much offensively. These guys are running the offense and they're sharing the ball just like it's the first quarter. I could not agree more and I was going to go a little deeper and, and talk about how like Darren is such a strong piece of the offense. He reversed, he uh, made quick passes, he attacked, he jump stopped, kicked out. Uh, then he threw a little baseline wrap pass into Dawson. And, uh, yeah, it's a good unit right now playing for the Blue Jays. And Tease three for three. Make that four for four. Off the bench from the line. Dawson's going to be a ball player. He is, and he's going to be a ball player. And here they come the other way. Conestoga put up a three ball. A little short. And there's Darren Hill with a nice block out. Good job on positioning by the senior. And look at that, he's dribbling between his legs, he's feeling it. And Grell will have it top of the key back over to Darren. Oh, that one's going to be stolen. And they're going to go hard to the hole, and 
Here's going to be Grail on the foul. The clock will continue to run since we're at a 40-point margin. And Caden Simmerman will be going to the line to shoot a one and one. So Coach Aarons, this is always going to be a tough night for those coaches when your season ends. He's got some terrific seniors, and here's a free throw up no good. And uh, this is tough. I saw Adam Vogt last night when talked to him after Louisville got beat by Conestoga. There were tears in his eyes, tears in his assistant coach's eyes. It's hard to say goodbye to those seniors, isn't it? Yep. Spent a lot of time with them on and off the floor, and you bond with them, and you care a lot about them. And so the Blue Jay squad now goes to 22 and 1 with that 69 29 victory over the Conestoga Cougars. They will play the winner on Thursday night at 7 p.m. versus Lincoln Christian and Lincoln Luther, which we'll have coming up next. And fellas, we're going to do a short wrap up here because we'll have Coach Mose on at halftime of the next game. But give me your thought on this 40 point win for the Big Blue. Uh, end of their business started a little slow. Um, shots were falling. They, they kind of stepped it up on the defensive end. They started finishing at a high clip. Evan Brooks finished really well. Uh, shot a couple threes in and, and really took care of their business uh, in, the, in the second, third, and fourth quarters. Yeah, you wonder, looking at it from uh, um, the other side of the ball, you know, I, I think you know what you're up against. You're up against a really, really good Ashland team. And you come in with the game plan, and, and as a coach, you you know what you're up against. You hope your game plan can hold together, but I, I think the, the better, stronger, faster skill team won. And I've been on that other side of it many times where you, you have a chance, and you, you, you try to work your plan, but eventually I think the usually the better team wins out. And one of the big moments tonight, the differences tonight, Noah Simonese last night with 25. He's been averaging over 23 points a game. The Blue Jays held him to just five. And, uh, and we're looking for some glasses here for Jason Leibel as well. And I can't see, so I don't know if I can be any help. But folks, once again, Blue Jays. And by the way, let me get the scoring for you here really quick. Hale Jacobson had 12, 16 points for Evan Shepard, 8 points for Brooks Kissinger, 2 for Luke Clark, and 12 points for Cougar Konzum, 4 each for Max Parker and Dawson Teeth, and 5 points for Darren Hill. And the Blue Jays now go to 22 and 1, and we'll play Thursday night at 7 o'clock against the winner of Lincoln Christian and Lincoln Luther. Well, with that, we're going to take a pause. We'll be back on the air shortly. Once again, the final 69-29 Blue Jays win. We'll be back here in about 10 or 15 minutes.